What's going on, Bud Mashers? I'm Mr. Gamer. And I'm Kitty Duvall. And welcome to episode 68 of SBR Reports. Are you not into phones? <sighs> anyway. <laughs> I saw the title. <sighs> I was just like, oh, ha, ha, that's cute. But then. I had to do it. I had to do it. I had to do it to him. <laughs> And masters, before we get started in today's episode, we would like to announce that uh, we're going to be at the Ray Gaming Lounge for on- their Smash Ultimate Release Party. Party, party. party you know, you could have just edited that in, right? Yeah, you know, I could have, but I didn't. So, so it's going to be at the Ray Gaming Lounge, December seventh. Duh. Um. <laughs> The address is 3044 North Central Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60634. Or you really could just Google it, but, you know, just in case your phone is smart enough to realize that it's an address when you go to my website, because you should definitely be going to my website, and then you click on it, and then boom, you're there. Um, It's free, or it's free, right? Yes, it's definitely okay. free. It is, I didn't, I it, didn't remember. <laughs> yes, it's free. Oh, you, are, you are free to bring your system. You are free to bring your friends. You are free to tell everyone about this i will be playing the game 1201 <laughs> oh and and just because like it's always a bonus to mention food there's a ring wing stop right next door y'all yeah like i forgot how much it is how much like how much percent off you get but you got you like you got food and then you got games right next door and if you're really nice the wonderful people at Wingstop will actually bring the food over to you. Yeah, so don't be a dick. Please, it would be nice, but yes. Don't that, embarrass Mr. Gamer. I would really appreciate that. I do that enough to myself, but... You do. Dis- you did not have to move in on, but yes, <laughs> December 7th, 5 p.m. at Raid Gaming Lounge. I will see all of you there. And with that being said, let's get into our um, non-meme light first story of the episode which is the fact that nintendo gets the youtube app because i guess youtube's a hoe i mean youtube be getting around i mean oh so people Granted, really, people been asking for hulu too so well and and here's my thing though it's like yes it's wonderful to have it on on my switch and it's on xbox and it's on ps4 and we obviously know that nintendo isn't going to give us any sort of browser because It'll, the system will be hacked even more easily than it is right now. But do we, is it, is it necessary? I guess. I mean, cause you're only going to do it. Cause here's the thing. You're only going to do it if you have Wi-Fi, and because the switch itself doesn't have a data plan, you're going to have it to connect it maybe to your phone. You can't just look at it on your phone. Look, people wanted it because they want the convenience of not having to switch their systems just to look at a YouTube video, apparently. You know, okay, all, all right. I know they're not going to do anything special like like picture in picture like you can do with Android phones. Don't know if you can do that with you um, with, with iPhone users. Not hating, just saying. Um, I mean, how are you going to be hating? They can't even get in the club. Hey, wow. I'm going to get so flame. <laughs> okay, anyway. So, it's nice that that is on there. Obviously, it is for free to download on the Nintendo eShop. So, if you have just been craving for you to finally have some YouTube on your Switch, like that know. was just the piece you needed, uh, it's there for you. I mean, I would be happier with, like, Hulu. I think you'd be happier with Animal Crossing. <laughs> And this is why I'm glad we don't record. Because the faces I make because you're such an asshole. Maybe a little Can bit. Can we say that on the radio? It's a podcast. Who cares? Anyway. And it's mine. <laughs> um, but moving on. Next up, we have Ubisoft getting deeper into esports. Woo woo. Yeah, pretty soon I'm going to be hearing people scream leagues instead of football. I'm actually really excited about that. Alrighty then. Um, so, as reported by ComicsAsylum.com, while the finals for the season two were happening just yesterday, uh, this being for Rainbow Six, uh, the author had the happened to have the pleasure of catching up with Adam Kleeman, the esports and communication manager at Ubisoft. 
he seemed happy with the direction that Ubisoft has been taking with their online shooter. While hardly a new hand at promoting themselves at big venues, Ubisoft is still a fledgling in terms of esports at least. Now, one of the uh, there's a few games that are thrown around here. First, obviously Overwatch, and then there is Rainbow Six. Another one, which is free to play on the Nintendo Switch, is called Brawlhalla. I downloaded Brawlhalla yesterday, and it's it's not Smash, it's not Rivals of Ether, which is on Steam, but at the same time, it, it's not bad. I don't know if it's esports worthy but then again i i just picked it up i do like the variety of characters so are you saying that it's something to tie you over with your huge need for smash okay so <clears throat> i put myself on a very <laughs> i put myself on a very uh strict schedule with that i have to finish at least the dragon's crown game dragon's dogma or dragon's crown don't that- you have to Finish the world ends with you. That was going to be the other game that I have to finish. Isn't that the, wasn't that what we agreed on? I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So. I'm taking your Wii U. You. you I'm taking you, your Wii. You will try. That That is. <laughs> I know where you live. That's nice. <laughs> so, obviously, it seems as if Ubisoft is going to try to ride the trend that esports is, is already going in. Just as Ms. Duvall said, maybe we'll actually see people in a bar like in a regular bar like a cheers type bar but instead of oh my god instead of going for like you know go bears it'll be like go i don't even know of an i don't even know of an overwatch team no no but is this is this gonna be great it's gonna be a gaming bar and i'm going to love it and i need it i mean i don't even like sports well, I mean, think about it this way: how many gaming, how, how many gaming locations similar to Ignite and Raid Gaming Lounge do you see? They they are popping up a lot of places because not everyone has the not everyone has the finances to buy the games, or even even on the more expensive end of the spectrum, buy the PC needed to play some of these games. So you know. I, I think this is great. Obviously, I am 100% for esports getting bigger and better because it's. I mention this very often. If poker can be considered a sport on ESPN and get just as much talk and news time, like, come on. Th- then, you know, just let me smash. God, I just, I just want the game. Just want, I Please just, don't say that. I just, I just want. Please never say that again. I just realized what I said. Yeah, don't ever say that again. All right, moving on. PUBG is declining in streamers, according to the latest Stream Lab quarterly report. And this water is, is wet. <clears throat> I mean, uh, okay, but can water be wet though? You can't use my joke <laughs> that I used two weeks ago back at me. But more importantly, we actually did cover this similar thing, but it was actually with Fortnite, where the hours that were streamed on Twitch with Fortnite were on a unfortunately steady decline. And now it seems as if that's the case with PUBG. Now, just like as I mentioned with Fortnite, I don't believe that the games are getting bad, but you have newer games that are popping up. And and I believe I mentioned just last week as well, when Smash Ultimate comes out, I'm expecting for those numbers to continually decline because we have block up op- uh, block ops blops four that, you know, people are playing a hell of a whole lot. And, you know, um, you know, babies aren't just popping out with controllers in their hands. So you're really just moving the amount of people from that the audience you have in from one box to another. And people were in PUBG and then Fortnite came along and then you had a huge chunk of them going over to Fortnite. And then some of the people to Fortnite went back to PUBG because PUBG got better. But then the next game, which let's face it, it's still Battle Royale-ish, Blops 4 came out. So you had people from both PUBG and Fortnite going over to Blops. Like, I'm like, going to be real with you, Chief. I tuned out after a while because you started doing that thing you do. Yeah, probably. <laughs> So, okay, so apparently because um, I, I seem to be speaking, there, there seems to be uh, too much words. Um, <laughs> times are changing. Fortnite's losing its popularity. 
PUBG was already on the decline. New games are coming out. We got to get the new hotness. We got to see the new. Battle the Royals next are getting boring. Is essentially what. Plus, Smash is coming out. Let's face it. I just, you know what? I think I'm just gonna check to see December seventh. Okay, and if it seems as if that I can't stop talking about Smash, it's because I can't stop thinking about it. Like, I'm probably not going to be sleeping. I'll probably get like an hour or two of sleep. That way I can drive over to the release party. Um, I am going to slip Z-Quill into your damn juice. I'll make sure that you you don't get near my juice. Man. Uh, just like Belgium wants to make sure that people can't have loot boxes in their video games anymore. And some games are actually pulling themselves out of Belgium. That sounded dirty. Hmm. I am. I quit. <laughs> oh my god. I am, the gamer. I am so sorry. Oh man, it's not even a 69th episode. <laughs> I I got I got nothing. I got I have. Anyway, so people, developers, game people are being babies about the whole loot box thing because Belgium said fuck you, essentially. Yeah, so it turns out that and so now they're <laughs> saying fuck you back. Well, and well, and their and in their terms of expletive here, we have Kingdom Hearts Union X, which is a mobile game, uh, Dissidia Fantasy Opera Om- Omnia, and Mobius Final Fantasy have all announced that they will stop operating in Belgium. Now, as a gamer, I who say, plays these? Now, I did play. King- <laughs> I, hold on, hold on, hold on. I did play Kingdom Hearts Union X. And it was fun for a while, but essentially you hit the, you, you hit the, I, I, I call it, you hit the wall of fun. And the wall of fun uh, specifically tie, uh, is specifically tied to the free to play model where the game is only good for you up until this point until you have to put money in so that you can either be on the same level with other people who are playing this game or to be able to compete with other people who play this game. And... Unfortunately, if you cannot operate without the loot boxes, um, like, for example, uh, Shadow of Mordor and how they had to redesign their whole game after they pull uh, after their uh, after their marketplace essentially was pulled from the game. They had to redesign and rebalance the whole thing. Ah, that's really kind of telling. Why? Why didn't they just stick to people buying extra currency? Because you don't make enough money that way. And that oh, and trust me, this is something we're gonna be hitting on later, button masters, so stay with us, please. But the idea is that <clears throat> you you make the game. The game is onto the free to play free to play model, but free to play, and then you have to pay to either win slash enjoy in this case. So I personally have I'm happy about the fact that people in Belgium don't have to they don't have to play these games now and this may sound um given the current political climate let me just get this out the way i believe that if the government wanted to step in and say hey no loot boxes that's something i'd be okay with i seriously i would be fine with no loot boxes i'm not saying no microtransactions or, or at least restricted loot boxes. yeah because well your kid it, can't get the damn credit card exactly it's predatory it is and it's and it's always a little bit it's like 99 cents here 199 299 just a little bit at a time you know 50 dollars you get 20 loot boxes and you get to spit in our face Actually, we're going to spin in your face. Right? It's actually, it's, it, you, we, you, you would think that it's the other way around, but no, they get to spit in your face. But I... I you get 20 loot boxes with the chance of one of them being a rare item. Woohoo! I guess. Woo. Yeah. But, I mean, that's... That's... I can't even say that that's... That it's not upsetting to me at all. I think it's great. Like, let let this grow. Though, I would, I think that this sort of legislation would have a really, really, really hard time in the U.S. I I, I think that they... You know what? I'm trying to just wait on them to get their stuff together for everything else going on. Loot boxes is at the bottom of my list. Okay, good point. (laughs) When it comes to the U.S. I can't trust them to cook a turkey right now. I mean, what's going to be turkey season soon? Though technically, if you go into Costco, Thanksgiving doesn't exist and it's just Christmas season. But anyway. Did you have caffeine before we started? 
No, I'm actually just feeling really good. You took a nap. But <laughs> while we're on the same note as microtransactions, it turns out that Fallout 76 will also have them. But hold on. It's not pay to win. P- Nani? Right. But that's but that's but Bethesda boss Pete Hines talks about how microtransactions are used in the PS4, Xbox One, and PC game of Fallout 76, but it is purely cosmetic. That's such a dumb start to the sentence. Bethesda. <laughs> Say that five times fast. I'm not even going to attempt to. <laughs> Hines states, if you don't want to spend money in the Atomic Shop for cosmetic stuff, you don't have to. We give you a shitload of atoms just for playing the game. Folks that want to spend money on whatever the hell it is because they don't have enough atoms, they can. But it's not, I'm now playing against better against better players because I spent money. It's not pay to win and it's not loot crates. You got to make sure that you say that or else you are just, you, you are just opening up the door to just so much hate. Let's face it. Especially if your games have any sort of monetization, and if you say it's loot boxes, you are all like just just I just mean, take it, just kneel down and take it. I mean, Fallout seventy six DLC packs, whatever they will be, will also be completely free. So I am like it that they are saying, "Hey, if you want to give us your money, give us your money. Yes. We're still gonna give you stuff, but give us your money." But and <laughs> what the. F- that's the noise I think corporations make when they want money. I think you've been around different corporate. You and I have been around different corporations. But so the online. <laughs> no, so call it, me. Oh in my God. Fallout 76 is um, in, the, in the world of Fallout 76. Essentially, you have atoms, which is things that you can use to buy certain cosmetics. Now, this seems as if it's very similar to Overwatch, except with the fact that Overwatch does have loot boxes. Fallout 76, you just play the game, and according to Heinz, you just earn a shit ton of atoms. Though, I guess you'd have to use them for something, so, you know, you can just use them to get a My Little Pony emblem on your thing, because I would probably do that. But it's nice... Probably, he says. Probably. Um, Probably. But it's nice to see that, I just like with the Smash Direct, I like the approach that Bethesda is taking with announcing their... Um, with, with announcing their game, more importantly, announcing the monetization of said game. I am liking uh, the thing I liked about Nintendo and the thing I'm liking about what Bethesda is doing with their PR stunt is because, <sighs> let's face it, this is all PR. I mean, yes. Um, yes. Then what I'm liking is that they're being gentle. They're being... Um, they're not forcing it. You don't they're have They're not forcing... There is a word I'm looking for. They're catering. They are catering to what the majority is voc- has been vocalizing, especially on Twitter. Because if y'all been on Twitter, whoo, Jesus. Once it gets to Twitter, everything blows up. And I, and, and I like that approach. It's like Nintendo. It's like, hey, only purchase this if you have faith in us. You are not obligated to. Bethesda, you can do this. It's not going to impact gameplay. It's not going to make you weaker or stronger. It's just going to make you look cooler. And all the other and all the DLC for this game is going to be free. So it's like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, once again, I still, I still hold my criticism that Fallout 76 um, is a game with Fallout in the title. But it's not necessarily a Fallout game. At least not the Fallout games that we've had before. It's definitely going... Um, off the rails similar to four but i'm going to also say that for what it is on its own merits it does look like it's going to be a lot of fun and that's a good thing too because they're also saying more specifically pete hines that the servers could run forever (laughs) ever and ever and ever and ever and ever so hines went on to say i see a plan for this game years I see a plan for this game for years and years. So talking about it when it's not up is kind of irrelevant. I have nothing to look at that says it's not going to be up forever. Now, this is their, I want to say their second attempt at trying to make a multiplayer game with the first one that kind of bombed really bad, The Elder Scrolls Online. 
Oh, God, that was a thing, wasn't it? That actually was a thing, and it did happen, and it should be recorded in the annals of history as um, not a good idea. Bitchy thought. (laughs) But with how they are trying to go about making this game essentially run forever, you would have to wonder, is there going to be enough content for it to run forever? Because what I don't want, but what I don't think will happen is this game reminds me of the unfortunate feeling that destiny 2 left with me where i bought the game and then i got the expansion pack and i was like oh okay this is cool and then after a while it all just kind of fell apart and i was like well this is boring now but then forsaken i believe yeah destiny 2 forsaken came out and then everyone's talking about how oh yeah this is great now Well, I don't want that to happen with Fallout 76. Will it? No, but I have to keep it in the back of my head because here's the other thing too. These games ain't cheap. I mean, yes, you'll get free DLC and the game's going to be 60 bucks, but but, but still, it's not. It's not cheap. You want to make sure that you get your money's worth. When did we start sounding like our parents? Uh, when we had when we had to start to pay for our own stuff. Oh yeah. Like it's not mom, dad. Can you get me? It's uh, <laughs> man. Let me look at that one zero in my in you know in my bank account, and it's to the right of the decimal point. Uh, that's a problem. But no, I think let let's see if they really do run forever. Let's see how long it goes. Fallout seventy six seems as if it's going to be giving us a wonderful product. It's going to. It seems like it's trying to. Mm, I'm not going to say craft a good story because it's the story that we've heard before over and over again with Fallout. So it's not necessarily anything new, but like I said, on its own merits, it seems like it's going to go, seems like it's going to go pretty well. But did you know what did not go pretty well? Oh my goodness. Diablo Immortal. Oh, cause it ain't. Oh man. All right. The memes. Okay. So. The memes. Oh, boy. Mr. Gamer, can you fill me in? Because I, I've just, I've been so confused why everybody's upset. All right. So, BlizzCon. <clears throat> Basically, it's just Blizzard saying, hey, this is what we got going on. A game, Diablo, a franchise. You have a lot of fans in Diablo. Lots and lots of them, and they have been wanting and craving a new Diablo game. Not a reskin, not a remaster. They've been wanting a new Diablo game. So, they did get a new Diablo game. And unfortunately, it wasn't what they thought. And the game is called Diablo Immortal. A game on your phones. Now, there are lots of arguments that are being thrown around. One of the arguments being that Blizzard does not know their, doesn't know their fans. As a matter of fact, you could perhaps say that they do know, but they don't care uh, because money. The other one, the, the other argument on the other side is that, so Diablo Immortal is just what you're getting now. Perhaps, maybe doubtful you'll get something else for the pc now even very popular streamers that attended blizzcon you can actually go to youtube um and find the video because interestingly enough the vid the trailer for this was released in three different formats just so that the dislike to like ratio was a little bit skewed because um, as of this recording, the cinematic trailer for Diablo Immortal has 183,000 dislikes. I mean, it probably they probably took it down and re-uploaded it again. Oh, most likely. Yeah. So you can clearly tell that this this isn't what they wanted, and of course, this was meme to all high heaven hence the title are you not into phones because that was the argument it was well don't you have phones 
like don't do, do you not have phones everyone has phones it's how we connect with friends and family so that we can get together and defeat demons and i'm just like um what? so so honestly it does sounds like a bunch of people really expected a number four in this uh thing when blizzard never said this and this is just a bunch of people upset because the rumors weren't true also I don't know a lot of Diablo people that stay on their phones, but that could be me. Well, not only that, but to say it's a fully fledged Diablo experience on mobile sounds like a bunch of crap. And That's I and, true. and 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 now a lot of other people have covered this. I mean, uh, I've never played Diablo, <clears throat> so I wouldn't know. It's it is a it it's a roguelike dungeon crawler where you grab loot and you find pants and you get another pair of pants and if those pair of pants have higher numbers than the current pair of pants you're wearing then you switch them out and when your inventory is full of pants you go and sell your pants and you go and do it again. Diablo. Okay. <laughs> but but um now there was one uh one person on YouTube Philip DeFranco. Uh, he covered this story. Um, there was actually one point that he missed. Um, a few people have hit on it, um, but it's perhaps another reason why the video game Diablo Immortal is going to be mobile. And it's for monetization purposes. Ah, yes. Because I mean, Blizzard wants that sweet, sweet transaction money. Because, and I have no idea, no idea what can possibly come from this game. But even let's just say the game itself is 20 bucks, 20 because it's a mobile game. So they're not going to charge you. They're not going to charge you first day triple A title money, though they say Blizzard, it's a fully fledged Diablo experience on mobile. So let's just say the game is 20 bucks. You still have to... I forget that people actually pay for apps. Yes. <laughs> like, I pay... What was it? Dragon Quest Eight. I, I pay for that one. I have the full Dragon Quest Eight game on my phone. And there is no microtransactions with it. I, I am almost certain that there will be with this. Now, I know that in previous Diablo iterations, they had the auction house and that was pulled. But... With it being on mobile, you have the opportunity to truly monetize your game down to the minute. Let's just say your character can only do uh, six dungeons a day, but your friends are getting together because you were finally able to all get together. Um, but you don't have the ability to go into another dungeon. Similar to Pokemon Go, where you get one free raid pass a day. Let's just say you get six times that you can go into a dungeon and after that your character is fatigued. So in order for you to do another six dungeons, you have to drink a potion. That way your character is no longer fatigued and you can go and do this. But you going and you going through that dungeon only gives you a three, five, let's just say seven percent chance of you getting the item that you want after defeating the boss. So you have to do it over. So and over and over again. So hold on, because we're entering that territory or on the re into speculation. Yes, we are, and that is the reason why a lot of y'all are disappointed in the first place. Not to sound like that one auntie, but don't get your hopes up. Okay, they're still a company. Well, and, yes, and and <laughs> I don't even got my hopes that high for Animal Crossing. Okay, yeah, I mean, the Animal Crossing game you're playing on mobile, that still has some sort of monetization with it. Yes. So it is it's it is something that is really difficult to get away from. And honestly, I think this just shows how much times have changed since... I, I hate that. And, and, uh, but it's uh, true. Like, most kids that are younger than us, Gen Z play games on their phones they you don't see them running around with 3ds's the switch this came out so you're starting to see that but you don't see them running around with 3ds's and stuff you see them with their phones even kids younger than them like you see them aiming for mommies and daddies and phones games they put games on phones people want excuse me people want to be on the move while they game. Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm Like you have your consoles at home, but you also I mean, look at the Switch. 
Look yeah. at the switch. Yeah, you, you, to have it on the go. I'm, I'm, I just, I, I, I want everyone listening to. Well, everyone who's listening and also is interested in Diablo Immortal, really think about that fully fledged Diablo experience um and to be fair there are going to be people who are going to buy this game just because they saw how upset everybody was if it's if it's something you can buy it might just be free who knows and another thing that i want to make sure is brought up is the anger was not just 100 that this is a mobile game it was the fact that this is a mobile game that seems very similar to another mobile game called endless of god which is already root which is which people are already upset that that game looks like a diablo clone now blizzard defended themselves saying that this diablo immortal was built from the ground up and that this was just the the best of this is the best interface for mobile experience so you have makes sense so you have fans getting a game they didn't want that looks like a copy of a game that looks like the reskinning of the same game. What? What? You are really loving these crossovers. I need you to stop. So I mean, Smash Ultimate is the most ambitious crossover. Sorry, 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 oh God. sorry. Oh God. Okay, but before we wrap up, we just wanted to remind you that December seventh, five p.m. Raid Gaming Lounge. The ad- address is. 3044 North Central Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60634. Be there or be square. Please come regardless of how lame he is. Trapezoid up. Come on. I'm sorry. I am so... I'm so sorry, guys. And with that being said, this is Mr. Gamer. (sighs) And I guess this is Kitty the Ball. Signing off.